Hi. Today I'd like to talk about drones and particularly their impact uh, on the battlefield, their proliferation, the vast numbers in which these are now being used in theaters like Ukraine, previously in Nagorno-Karabakh, in Libya, all over and of course across the Arabian Peninsula. Drones are increasingly inexpensive. They can be built for a few hundred dollars all the way up to millions of dollars. But generally, the drones that have been used in large numbers have been of the few hundred dollar or few thousand dollar variety. Increasingly, they're being used in all types of roles. For example, you can use an inexpensive drone to provide some short range um, surveillance to uh, an individual soldier or to a company of soldiers. You can use quadcopters to extend that uh, distance out by a little bit and also some larger quadcopters which might be able to carry a little bit of uh, payload. You might add a grenade or a mortar or um, some kind of uh, weapon uh, onto that drone and then use that in the battlefield as a tactical weapon that is a non-line-of-sight weapon. This is very powerful because now you can basically be protected yourself. You can have a camera on the drone. You can fly the drone out, identify a target, and drop a payload on that target. In many cases, the drones are so inexpensive that they are basically entirely expendable. But then going up from that quadcopter, there are drones that might be fixed-wing drones, such as the Iranian Shahid, which has been used in large numbers in uh, Ukraine. This drone uh, can cost somewhere around twenty to $25,000 and can really carry about 50 kilograms, uh, which is a substantial amount in terms of a warhead. Now, if you imagine a hundred such drones, that's probably a cost of between two and two and a half million dollars. But what does it take to stop a hundred such drones? Well, today, the answers to that uh, question might be air defense, either gun-based air defense, you know, things like uh, CWIS, uh, close-in weapon systems, Orlikon cannons, uh, or things like the Stinger missile, or the Hawk missile, which is an older uh, surface-to-air missile, or the Patriot, or TAD. But each one of these is very, very expensive. It's expensive to purchase the system, it's expensive to anticipate where these drones will be coming in from. It's expensive to position the radars and the ground units, the ground-based air defense, in sufficient quantities to provide coverage, uh, the, the necessary coverage. And in the case of a system like the Patriot, you're talking about a missile that costs millions of dollars uh, with a drone that costs maybe $25,000, maybe even less. So these forms of counter-UAS uh, operations are really not very viable. There's another form which is electronic warfare and this ranges from large systems down all the way to a rifle-like device that is often used to scramble the control signals, the control frequencies that are allowing a person on the ground to control this drone. The problem with these approaches is that over time increasing levels of intelligence and AI will be integrated with these drones. And once they have multiple ways of establishing where they are, even in certain cases not requiring GPS signals, and then they're also able to identify what they're looking at, what they're flying over, who the targets are, and so on, using computer vision and a variety of other uh, perception algorithm approaches, then it doesn't really matter whether you interrupt the control signals between the ground controller and the drone. The drone will still be able to carry out its mission autonomously. And autonomy is something where more intelligence on the drone means that electronic warfare becomes less effective. So that, to me, is not a very effective counter. It's still expensive today. Um, and then also the uh, future prospects for something like that are not very bright. So another way that you can counter drones is with drones. The cost of uh, each class of drone can be matched with what is countering it. And there's a sufficient amount of intelligence in what is countering the attacking drone to be able to take that down and to be able to form an effective defense. Now, along these lines, uh, several years ago, seven, eight years ago, General John Allen, four-star retired Marine General, and I, we were working together on this concept of hyperwar, and as part of that, we developed the technology and uh, filed for patents 
for exactly this type of system, a, an aerial drone minefield. The idea that you could initiate uh, a counterattack with a large pre-positioned or rapidly deployable set of drones that were all operating independently as a swarm and were able to create a maneuvering aerial minefield. Now, this approach hasn't yet been implemented in a field of battle, but to me is one of the most effective ways of thinking about neutralizing both drone operations as well as inexpensive cruise missiles and really uh, higher-end drones, the larger drones, and lower-end cruise missiles are merging into one. For example, I was talking about the Iranian Shahid drone earlier, and if you think about it, it is really a form of cruise missile. Now, even the very advanced U.S. cruise missiles, for example, the latest version of the Tomahawk, they have autonomy capabilities that now make them much more like a drone. In other words, they don't just have to fly from point A to point B and hit the target and be done. They can also loiter. They can also look for targets. And those types of autonomous operations uh, mean that this distinction between a drone and a cruise missile, particularly one-way drones and cruise missiles, is shrinking rapidly. So these drone minefields and maneuvering uh, swarm systems can be used to counter all these types of threats. And frankly, they can be used to counter even higher speed threats because when deployed in depth, these drone minefields can trigger a sufficient amount of kinetic energy and dissipate that kinetic energy over a space that is sufficient to take out even a high-speed projectile. So in my mind, this is an area that needs to be investigated uh, much more deeply and may present our only viable counter to the proliferation of low-cost drones.